Feeling chilly? SG Heating and Cooling, fixing it right, day or night. SG Heating and Cooling is located at 7005 Cooley Lake Road in West Bloomfield. SG offers free estimates on new equipment and 0% interest financing for up to 18 months. Eligible equipment qualifies for rebates from Consumers Energy and DTE. SG will clean your furnace, verify it is working properly, and perform a safety inspection for only $59. SG also offers duct cleaning and sanitizing starting at $300. You can find us on the web at sgheatingcooling.com or call 248-242-6730 today for all of your heating and cooling needs. SG Heating and Cooling, fixing it right, day or night. 248-242-6730. Do you remember turning 18? Do you remember feeling independent? Was it a cause for celebration? Well, this week, four young adults in the state of Michigan will arrive at the age of independence and will lose the support of the foster care system that has seen them through some of the hardest times in their lives. They are tough and intelligent. Some will land on their feet no matter what. But let's talk about how much better the world would be if all of them had the support that allowed you to celebrate your independence. The question is, what can you do? Unring the Bell is a weekly show Tuesday nights from 8 to 10 p.m. right here on Cave Radio. We will be featuring interviews and in-studio guests geared towards creating a support system for these young adults that gives them the best chance to land on their feet and truly celebrate their independence. We will be exploring ways to use the trades, music, art, and technology to unring the bell. And we invite you to join us Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Be there. You're listening to CRBRadio.com. The words and opinions you are about to hear are of the hosts and do not reflect the management, sponsors, or affiliates of Cave Radio Broadcasting. Today's episode of The Real Nonsense is brought to you by Melodic Retirement Services, LLC. Young and old, prepare for your future today. Give Melody a call at 248-301-2439. And now coming to you live, a stone's throw from the Motor City in courtesy of Cave Radio Broadcasting Studios in fabulous Redford, Michigan, it's The Real Nonsense with my man Chris. And here's your host... Okay, great. So my mic's up now. Okay, great. So thanks, Eric. So Melody is not here tonight, so we're gonna uh, <coughs> we're gonna roll the show on. But that's great because I got Terry and Eric here with me tonight. So I'm in, Ooh, that's good. What's good? I'm man? in great company with Terry, Terry and Eric. But I, I miss Melody. She came <laughs> in and then she came out and popped out and and that's that, right? Uh, so Me- Melody's better to look at than me. I already know. <laughs> So definitely, but good to be here, man. Uh, T. Martin, T. Mac in the building, straight shit, shit, chilling. Can't just kicking it with my man. Absolutely, so absolutely. definitely, man. Eric, how's it going? How's your week? Oh man, let me. Uh, oh, let me turn my mic. Man, all kinds of extra buttons to push today. I know. Um, it is. It's been an excellent week. I am back to a full time job for the first time in uh, a long time. Yes, wow. great. And uh, it's it's great. I got a uh, working at a uh, Tsad. Um, Meat distribution in an Eastern Market. Great. So, hold on. Hold on. Hold up. Sod and meat distribution. Sod meat distribution. Oh, sod. It's, uh, right. it's not a dirt, lot. Not of dirt and meat. Hold up. Okay. Not dirt and meat. No, no. S A A D is in lots of halal. <laughs> not dirt and meat. So if you, it, it, uh, we are we are here to uh, to serve all of your halal uh, protein needs. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Chicken, goat, sheep, all kinds of fun stuff. All right. There's nothing like full time employment to keep the pressure off and to keep the bed warm, right? This oh, is yeah. true. Yeah, full time employment does both. Very, very good. Very, very good. So look, look, fellas, I was reading a couple of headlines this week. So one of the things that this really concerning is the COVID situation is spiking up in Michigan again. Uh, so we're at we at we're at that point again this time of year where. You know, people are going to have to put their mask on. We're going to have to do the right thing. Yes. And I don't want to po- politicize mask wearing. That's your choice. It's up to you. But in order to get this to a controllable state, we're going to have to do our part, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, not nice that you don't want to politicize it. The whole thing is just say, just take care of yourself and take care of those around you, you know, and just, you know, respect, uh, respect other people. Yeah, I- I'll tell people straight up, if you've never had COVID before, 
you you just don't want it. Like, right. I've you know I've had the unpleasant experience, and, and really, that's just something you just don't want in your body. It's it's a horrible thing, uh, particularly at this age. I'm 55. I have no shame in saying how old I am, but at 55, you definitely don't want that in your body. It's a horrible, 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 horrible thing. And then we had the debate that's going on with metal detectors in school in wake of the uh, Oxford shooting. So I want to say again, I'm a, we're holding up in prayer. Definitely uh, those families, victims and families that were affected by the horrific shooting in Oxford last week. Um, but, you know, the metal detector, that's a state of conversation now. So we're back to that again. Well, well, the, the whole thing with it, be it's, I think they're just kind of uh, trying to differentiate between suburbs and, you know, city schools. Oh, like, I saw metal detectors all the time. Like, I, I thought it was the norm. I didn't know it was something different. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I thought I, it was a, I know it's the norm in, I guess, city schools and whatnot. They're used to that. But in suburban schools, it's like they kind of don't no, want it to be known it that they have that. It needs to be the norm everywhere at this yeah. point, I, I think. You know, everybody's capable. <laughs> right. Yeah, they should I be. I mean, you know, so so it should it should be the norm. Um, yeah, but it's 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 a very touchy, touchy, touchy type of situation. But metal detectors, searching bags, there's nothing wrong with searching a book bag. There's nothing wrong with going through a metal detector. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't think it invades anybody's privacy. I think it keeps people safe. Yeah. That's what I mean, they should do. Well, in, this, in that case in particular, though, they kind of did everything right, except for they didn't search the bag and they didn't expel him to have him in there twice one day apart as well as have the parents there that says right there yeah, that's he's a problem that's a, that's a definite redo right there yeah. what do you think eric i think that's a definite redo i'm i'm <sighs> yeah I, every time i every time i revisit this i get i get another a couple of facts and i'm 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 trying real hard to to wait until i have as All many the of them as i can get All the facts. A, to, to have it straight yeah um but i Man, I don't know. I, I here's the thing. I live in a state right now, and I know that this this in particular would not has nothing to do with this tragedy in particular, sure. right? But I live in a state right now where if I can pass an instant credit check and an instant background check, I can walk into um, a firearm store, walk out with a borderline piece of military hardware and all the accessories and ammunition I can carry absolutely in less than an hour. Right. So I think if we're all being completely honest with ourselves, we should be shocked this doesn't happen more. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, so. Yeah, it doesn't take much, right? I, I just, I, I wonder. I don't know. I wonder. I wonder what the breaking point will be when you know we finally decide to to get up and 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 make a move on this culturally, the way we kind of have with co- well, some of us have had, have with COVID, where we've we're willing to change the way we approach our daily lives. If it means benefiting the community around us, right? Absolutely. Um, you know, and at some point, we're going to have that conversation about firearms, and yeah. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping this is it. Yeah, we can have a conversation right here on another day for sure. Right. We need to revisit this conversation because this is a good conversation between the three of us. We need to have a conversation. Okay, so we're here at five, and our guest tonight, Jared Davis from Jared Davis Photography. We are honored and grateful to have him in our presence tonight. It's not often that we get to have, <clears throat> excuse me, I got dry throat tonight. I don't know what the hell it's is the, it, the wind? It's the wind, man. I'm telling you. It's messing with my, it's messing with my vibe, right? Uh, that's okay. all good. So, it. So, so, so we got photographer <laughs> extraordinaire Jared Davis from Jared Davis Photography with us tonight. Mr. Davis, can you hear us? Is, is, is he on? Is he good? Oh, yeah. You're good? I hope so. Okay, okay. We're good. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find so out we're in a good. second. So we're good. Hey, Jared, I was hoping the mail was going to be here so we could really have a, a really, really uh, uh, tag team fun Man. type of thing. But Mel, Mel, <laughs> Mel said she wasn't feeling well. She was under the weather. So guess what? When you're under the weather, she out. when you're under, uh, well, when you're under, she listening. yeah, yeah, yeah. You put a mic up. When you're under the weather, the real nonsense. You stay at home yeah. because you'll bring the nonsense to the studio. So we definitely don't want that. So Mel, we're gonna keep you in our prayers and everything. And uh, yep, so we're gonna move on with this interview today because Jared's here. Jared, what's going on? You just what's going on? Good evening. How's everybody? Hey, we're good. We're good. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, we're glad. Honor. To- um, you talking about it's an honor to have me. I'm honored to um, be a, someone you invited to this um, great room of people, and uh, just excited about um, the opportunity. And uh, you know, it's Saturday. Just got off a shoot. 
Okay. Um, out, outdoor location shoot with winds wow. at 40 miles an hour. Man. Wow. And no then, problem. Uh, in the wow. middle of hey, it, no problem. In the middle of the graduate shoot, uh, we got <laughs> sleep. So we had to immediately go to Plan B, which was take it to the studio. So we got that young lady, her graduate um, session taken care of, graduated from Wayne State in nursing, and uh, we made it over here. So this she, afternoon to so her initial, her initial thing was to take the pictures outside. Um, this young lady was very um, organized in that she sent me an, an entire Pinterest board of several pictures that she wanted to take all around campus. Um, most of the spaces I was familiar with being an alum now, number one, number two, having shot there several times. Yeah, yeah. And um, as we were walking around the campus, um, it started to sleep in the <laughs> Michigan weather. So, um, wow. you know, um, my wa- my camera is water resistant, but um, that young lady was not. So we, hey, uh, absolutely. <laughs> we very quickly um, reverted to plan B, which was to take it into the studio. But um, we got her done. She's very happy. And um, she's wow. on her way. And we've made it over here with you all. You, you take a lot all of right, pictures brother. outside? You've been taking a lot of pictures outside this winter in the cold? Um. You know what? People want what they want. Yeah, yeah. The um, younger generation, they don't care about the elements. They want, they want to, they want it where they want it. And they want to look how they want it to look, and uh, wow. we're here for it. I mean, yeah. they have um, Under Armour undergarments. <laughs> I layer up, and if they're ready, I'm ready. Wow. Um, the wind was um, a little tough as a challenge, but I you got to learn how to f- catch that focal point in between. Um, and get the that Beyonce and shoot. But I mean, that's how you get that billow, right? That's how you get that billow. They want yeah. that wind in the hair. They want that billow. Make sure it's in the right <laughs> wow. direction, yeah. and not across mm-hmm. the front. Forty-five of their miles face. an hour, huh? I mean, it's, it's sideways, but yeah. Well, you know what? When we started, it was fifty-something degrees. When we finished. Right, that was about one o'clock, right? It was about mm-hmm. thirty nine, right. Yeah, it was yeah. nice. It changed quickly. Michigan does that to you. Very cool. Always. We yeah. it dropped about twenty degrees in two hours. Wow. We're back to winter. Wow. So so let's talk about let's talk about how you got here. Let's talk about because I want our listeners to 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 appreciate the 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 career path that you've taken so far. So why don't you enlighten our listeners on how Jared Photography even came into existence? Let's let's kind of touch on that a little bit. Well, um, I was um, challenged by my pastor, um, Solomon J. Kenlock at Triumph Church to join a ministry about eight years ago. And um, at the time, I was just, uh, I hadn't even joined a church. I'd been going there for years. But when I finally joined, I had an opportunity to talk with him um, one-on-one. And he um, gave me the charge to join one of the ministries. And um, a few weeks later, um, I saw some people taking pictures of one of the gospel artists mm. and said, you know what, I've always liked taking pictures. That looks like it would be fun. Let me go join the committee. And so um, I went to the ministry meeting, and I got there, and they started laying down rules. We shoot in manual, and um, we don't use flash because it's not a kind of What's shoot in manual? What's, what's that mean? Um, basically, you not you got to know how to work the camera. Okay, gotcha. All those little numbers and buttons and all of those things at the time, which I knew nothing about. Okay. Um just like most of us, you turn to the green button and auto, you take pictures. Gotcha. Um, once they started laying down the rules, I um, got up to tip out. And so the young lady, uh, Lakeith Anderson, who was over the uh, ministry, her and her husband, Steve, they stopped me and said, where are you going? And I said, oh, well, you guys are real photographers. I'm not. <laughs> I'm about to leave. This is, um, I'm wasting your time and you're wasting my time. And they laughed at me and said, come on back. Everybody in the room laughed because at the time, um, most people come to the ministry not really knowing how to take camera, take pictures like a professional. Okay. And so um, I came back and started to come to the services and serve in the ministry and learned how to work my camera. And then um, I'll probably within the first five or six months, um, I got real excited because, you know, you some of everybody comes to Triumph. Um, yeah. You know, everybody from... Mary Mary, Kurt Franklin, and Kurt Carr. A lot of big names. All whatnot. the big yeah. names come yeah, to yeah. the church. And so I was posting some of the pictures from the ministry on what was then Google Plus. I don't know mm-hmm. if everybody remembers that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was um that used to be a, a thing. Yeah. And um, absolutely. a good friend of mine, Andre Green, his wife, um, Judge Tracy Green, asked me how much did I charge to take pictures and I laughed at her. And she said, Um, Well Jed, you know what you have a good eye and um you should consider doing this professionally because I think God's giving you a gift. Sure. And um, something made me take her advice. And um, for the next year, I started to volunteer and take pictures for free. Mm-hmm. 
for a whole year. For for over a year. Wow. Birthday parties, baby showers, whatever event you was having, I'd ask if I could bring my cameras. I'd give you the pictures for free so I could learn lighting, so I could learn exposure, so I could learn how to move about and get groups of people, small groups of people, people, individuals. So you did your own apprenticeship. If that's what you want to do. And I, you know, but that's a good lesson because some people right. get a business and they just want to go out and make money and they're not really that great at it. Right. So it's, it's good to hear that somebody put in the work for free mm-hmm. just to say, hey, let me learn a trade and then I'll charge, right? Right. Right. Okay, great, great, go. And so after about a year or so, um, I said, well, let me see if I charge people $50, then pay me. And people pay me. And, um, and then I said, well, let me see if I charge people $100 after a few months of charging $50. And people pay me. And um, then after taking pictures and charging people and giving it to them, um, I was fortunate enough at the time to be working in a school where my next door neighbor was a graphic arts teacher who said, you know what, I think you might want to learn editing. Well, what's editing? Because I was just taking what I thought taking to pictures. be great pictures. Pointing and clicking. And he yeah, said, no, you need to learn Photoshop and Lightroom so that you can modify pictures accordingly, adjust white balance, adjust the color, pop the color, add vivid, um, modify, liquefy, and all of those things. So he gave me a few tutorials. And um, at that point, once I learned how to edit, it's like, okay, well, now I might have to charge $200 because this <laughs> takes a little more time. And um, he helped me develop a logo and... Jared Davis Photography LLC was born, and um, the rest is history. It's eight years later, and um, it's been eight years. years. Wow, it's been eight years. Wow, Man. it will be ten years in um, 2023. So, what's the plan for the ten year? What's the plan for yeah, the ten year? Big, a big promotion. What what are we doing for the ten year? You know what? Um, Got to give it to me right now. We haven't had that discussion here and I yet. All right. And I mean that um, genuinely. I kind of let him lead it. Um, I'm always um, pleased to be able to share the testimony because it was truly something that he gave me in church. It was not something that I thought of, something that I set out to do. It was just something that I fell in love with, um, serving in the ministry at church, and the rest, and the rest was history. So, um each year I do um, pray for different things um, to grow the business, but we're we're moving into year nine, so I haven't even started to think on year ten yet. Gotcha. But um, trust me, by year ten we'll have a you'll be your podcast will entertain millions of people, and I'll come back and tell you about it. <laughs> That's what we uh, hope. <laughs> That's for sure. What's happening? Absolutely, happen. absolutely. So, so what type of here's a <laughs> the hard question, right? So, so what type of pictures? do you kind of stay away from like like what don't you shoot Cause that's real good that's real good yeah um, what don't you shoot or what won't you shoot i shy away from 30 days old to about age three okay um, no, no kids well here's the thing um when the baby is first born in those first couple of weeks when they are doing any nothing but eating sleeping and yeah blowing up diapers right it's very easy to take their picture they're sleep they're adorable everybody loves it once they begin to sort of realize that they're a person and they're on earth and they're moving around and the lights is flashing and who is this guy and it's very difficult all right you'll be there for hours to come away with 12 pictures right and i've heard that before it's okay. it's, it's and so the mall they catch hell huh like pennies oh <laughs> yeah <they catch> hell. <laughs> No, yeah, I shy, no Santa Claus pictures, huh? Eric, you see those mall pictures? I probably, they probably catch hell, right? Yeah, they catch a lot. I mean, Usually, I, I, I've, I've waited in line for Santa with, with with people's kids one time. I don't envy any part of any of those any of that job. <laughs> the pictures at the mall, Santa Who Claus at the mall, Santa the photographer. The photographer. I mean, the photographer's <laughs> working all year round, so like I can only imagine. Yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah, <clears throat> wow, that's a lot. Santa's job is easy, depending on the on the young person. I shy away from that. Usually after age three, they sort of kind of understand how to finesse the camera. They want to take pictures. It's a lot easier to create the magic. But those first couple of years, two years old, don't call me till next year. <laughs> but 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 to have cell phones and social media made made capturing little kids easier because they always have a phone in their hand. Like somebody's mom is always giving a kid a damn phone. Like does it make it any easier? Not a chance. Not, not really. The phone doesn't look like 
a two thousand dollar camera. It looks like a phone. Right, right, right. So if you well, say I mean, smile, just the whole action of taking a picture, right? Yeah. Okay. Smile with the phone, they'll smile. You put a camera up, and they're like, okay, yeah. yeah, okay, gotcha, gotcha. it's not the same. Not the same. Not the same. It's not the same. So that's it. Okay, great. That's the easy. That's the easy. That's the easy. Demographic. Yeah, not that's actually a good right? thing. Well, I think well, not it was... just, and, and here's not to say that someone close to me, someone I love, someone that's a VIP won't call and say, "Come over and, and take the baby." I won't do it. But you asked me what I shied away from. Right. Uh, absolutely. Um, I also hmm. shy away from social events where, hey, picture man. Hey, yeah. picture man. Okay. Baby showers. Like back in the day, we used to be in the corner with the little with the card fold thing. Uh, that's, I, that's, is that what they think it is, kind of thing? Well, that's not what we don't. I don't pedal pictures. Exactly. Right. I'm a photographer. I'm exactly. an artist, and I like to be respected that way. But when somebody pays you, and and I'm not saying that I don't have several of those lined up in the next week because, you know, it pays well, and there are people that I know with, and there there is always opportunity there for someone to say, hey. I want you to shoot my family. My daughter or my son is graduating from high school. Later. You mean. Whatever. Or yeah. I want to do a, a branding shoot or yeah. a lifestyle shoot. I'm turning 40 or 50 or 60 or whatever. Um, however, um, I pick those with, with great intention so that I'm not standing there with a camera like I'm the help. And, hey, come over here and do this. Hey, you know, that, that yeah. sort of kind of <laughs> takes us away right. from the lane that we want to be in. Exactly. Yeah, I, I get that. that. That would be... Yeah, I yeah, had he's, a he's more the kind of photographer. He's not just gonna point and click. He wants to at least see, set the mood and everything. You don't want to just every picture do that. tells a story. And I mean, yeah. it's easy to take people just smiling and, and enjoying the moment or whatever. But I I like to uh, create what I call a wall hanger. Mm-hmm. When I send you my file, I want you to ha- be confused at just what picture I want to take enlarged to whatever size and hanging in your house. All right. Yeah. So I, I had the honor of using Jerry Davis photography for our wedding. I saw those. Those were it was extremely hot though. It was hot. I thought the camera was gonna melt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it was hot, man. It, Eric, it was. It was. It was ninety five. It was beyond hot. I mean, it was the, the thermostat was it, didn't tell the story. Okay, was, was it was it was it like that 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 deep South hot where it's like eighty five percent humidity right, too? Right. right. And I had on a total fat suit. I was not outside that day. I had on a total fat suit. I love my wife. My wife was beautiful, but I had on a fat suit, and it was very hot. Um and but but he did a very good job and I went home and I immediately went to uh, Staples and blew the picture up. It's like eighteen, what is it, eighteen by twenty four, something like that. Yeah, it's, it's it's hanging up in the house and we look at it every day, every day. It's it's it captured the moment exactly the way. Sometimes people can take a picture of you and c- cameras don't lie, right? Right. So it, it sees what it sees. It captures what it captures. Um, but. With that picture, it just said what we wanted it to say at that moment. It kind of summed up the whole afternoon, hot right. or not. When we look at that, we just forget all about how hot it was, how bad the temperature was. We just kind of roll with it. So yeah, it was a good picture. I'm tickled at his wife because she was she was she was hot and bothered. Yeah, she was hot and bothered. <laughs> at a certain point, she pushed her. Okay, I'm going back inside. I don't care. I don't care if I'm the brat. It's my day, and it's all about yeah, me. Yeah, my wife has a limited filter. Hey, have a limited filter. You look. She looked at me like you got some pictures. Okay, catch me inside <laughs> under the under the air conditioning. Hey, look, I got a quick little game, right? So I found this game uh, on the internet, and I want to play this photography game, right? Because it said these are the questions you don't ask a photographer. So, oh, wow. so, so I'm gonna I'm say the oh, question. Go. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Doing I'm, research, man. yeah, yeah. yeah That's I, dope. Oh, That's you dope. didn't do this. You didn't do this. You didn't do this to the PhD. No, no, no. I, I didn't. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> you didn't do that to her. So, so all I'm gonna ask you is, what do you think about this statement, right? Okay, so here's the first. Full disclosure. Okay, I want to be canceled, <laughs> everybody. I don't right. know how many hey, people we played, we played the disclaimer before the show. You're all right. <laughs> okay, so question one. When a person says, hey, can I have all of the photos you take? Sure. <laughs> so does that come up? Does that um, ever come up in, in question? Absolutely. People say, well, how many pictures? Um, one of our claim to fame is that every picture that we take, we fully edit and we deliver them to the client. No watermarks, no half resolution. Um, people look out with me because I'm still in love with taking pictures. All right. The passion of it that is only eight years old is still brand new to me. Okay. So, for example, I shot a couple last <coughs> night, just a, a holiday session um, down at the um, Fisher in front of the tree and around the building, beautiful artwork. 
I got home and where they probably would have only got 20 or 30 pictures, they ended up getting 85 because if there's a picture, full resolution, everything is perfect, I'm not going to delete it just because you only paid me a certain amount of money. Wow, that's great. Because what does it harm me to say, well, you know what, you all, y'all killed the session, you both look great, I didn't have to do anything in the editing booth, take this with you. Here's all the pictures. You great. Know? Mm-hmm. And, and the flip side is, oh my God, I love the pictures, I can't decide which ones to post. I can, post all of them, and just make <laughs> sure you tag your photographer. <laughs> tag How about that? You know, so... So here's question two. Can you Photoshop? Absolutely. Do people ask that? Have no, you ever had anybody ask you no. that? Okay. No, but in the words of um, master photographer and Adobe guy, Terry White, if you don't do something to a picture in post to make it just a little bit better, even if it's perfect coming out of the camera, then you're just taking pictures. You're not a photographer. Hello. Great. That sounds <laughs> great. What about this question? Can you change your style for our session? Can I change my style? You ever had that? No, I haven't had that. Anyone ask me that? What about, okay, so here's the last question. The contract reads that I, you know, my creative expertise is what's going to pretty much lead the session or whatever. If people have requests of different ways to do things, they have Mm -hmm. a different vision, of course, but can I change my style? That's tough. So without giving names away, what's the craziest vision you've had to capture? What's the craziest thing somebody ever asked you on a photo shoot to do? <laughs> <laughs> or or would it or would it by saying it would it just put the person out there? So you know. Oh, no, I would no. never say the person. Was he at the bachelor party? Nah, what bachelor party? Who? Who oh. you talking about? Oh, okay. <laughs> Not my my camera wasn't. Evidence. <laughs> if I was there, my camera wasn't. I can guarantee that. Um I don't know. Um, you know what? In the last couple of years, I've had to literally go and take classes because you have a lot of modern day people who want to look completely different than how they look. Okay, gotcha. So <clears throat> I've had to modify and do almost plastic surgery on some of my clients to make them look completely different than what they actually look like in real life. And um, after trial and error and YouTube videos, I literally went to Schoolcraft last year and took a semester of a class of advanced Photoshop to learn how to do those things because I started to hear those things over and over and over again. So what is it like? I want to look smaller or I want to look uh, oh, you whatever. Name, you name it. Lighter, darker. Whiten my teeth. Give me teeth because I, I, I've got a, a gap or a lot right here that's missing. Um, modify my waistline. Increase my waistline. Increase my bust line. Um, get that weird me hair on the, the top of my head because I'm balding, or I've got a you know, a, a, you name it. You name it. Wow. You name it. Is there a, a um a photography editing uh, equivalent to auto tune? Like, uh, you know how they they got this thing on uh, with with the music and the kids these days now, where they don't even have to sing anymore, and the computer just pitch corrects everything so that everyone's right in key. Is have have I guess what I'm is, are the have the professional filters. Um, gotten to that point where somebody who is full amateur can just pay, push some buttons, and get perfect color balance, perfect, um, you know, all the things. I won't say no. Um, There are a lot of young creatives that are amazing. And there are some filters that, there are some people that I know who have looked at me in my eye and said, I put filters on every single picture that I edit and um, all I can say is I learned how to take great pictures first so I don't need filters but there are people I had a client um, for an event that I shot last week where they were sub they were contracted for a client they they hired me to come and capture the event the person that they sent the pictures to said can the can the um, photographer come in and put a warm filter on all of the edits because they didn't like the bluish tint of the room that they hired me and put the lights in for me to take, and yeah. so um, you know it, it it varies, it varies, it varies. So here's a question: I know, I, I I bank on this one. Do you charge less if you shorten the length of the session, or if I only need a few pictures? No. <laughs> <laughs> but you've been asked that. 
Oh, um, don't now. Let's go back. That would be a client I would shy away from. Okay. As soon as they that ask the becomes, question, that becomes. Let me look at my cap. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> on that day. Because you know that whole haggling. You want to pay me twenty dollars because you only want to take six pictures. I've been got that way before. Oh, okay. and I said, oh, okay, yeah, we. I do it for seventy five bucks, and you get there, and it's like they got three outfits, and we don't do that anymore. Mm-hmm. We don't do that. It, it only takes one time to get knocked in the head with that one to say, you know what? Those are the type of people that. Yeah. When you when you when you hear the dog whistle, you you go another direction. <laughs> so are you interested in sending like having any of your photography, any of your photos, like with with um, news outlets or or stuff like that? Of have course, you, you, you of just, course. Okay, so what's the process for that? Have you ever, um, like freelance or is, Fox News or something? With the advent and the growth of technology of cell phones, photojournalism has become very very competitive very challenging um initially that was all i wanted to do i wanted my pictures to be seen by everybody i wasn't as concerned about um being able to generate income from doing photography it was more of i want to take a great picture and how do i get it in ebony how do i get it in magazines that for the most part don't even exist anymore um i have not put a lot of time and effort and trying to do that is very competitive. Um, in a lot of channels, pe- the the industries or the company or the news outlet, they have who they have, mm-hmm. and you can send in a great picture as a freelance and hope that it kicks back, but in most cases it doesn't. And so you end up taking a lot of great pictures and um, kicking and scratching to get in events and get that shot that nobody has and it ends up just being something in your library because that person is still going to purchase that picture from that person that they deal with and they do business absolutely with. absolutely so what's the hardest birthdays or weddings 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 i won't say hard but uh weddings is a very long day really? and it is okay you can have a birthday next year I can say, you know what, I blew it this year, it rained or whatever, I'll come next year, I'll do it for free. And in the traditional sense, you only get married once. Exactly. And for yeah. most people, it's the most important day of their lives. Absolutely. And as the photographer, I always say in my initial consultation, I am the best supporting actor in your wedding. Because when it's over, when you've eaten the cake, and everything is said and done, and all the gifts are open, months from now years from now you only have two things to remember three things your memory your video your pictures Mm -hmm. that's it when you all when when the couple is at odds and they want to kill each other i want them to be able to go to my pictures and look at that day and that moment and find something in there to make them stay together absolutely Absolutely. birthdays is uh yeah it's a big deal until it's the, the day is over but wedding pictures are a big deal forever what's the largest wedding you shot <clears throat> largest wedding i largest. shot um i worked with a team we did a wedding of about 600 people a couple of years ago it was three of us yeah wow the wedding party was about 30 people and um, wow and it was three of us wow i can't imagine that so uh, when you say crew, so do you have a crew that works specifically for Jared, or no. are you a part of a crew? I have a, a, a network of several creatives that all work for themselves, and depending on um, the job or the opportunity, we partner up and work together. I don't have a JDP team of people yet. No, okay. I'm working on it. So right now, it's, it's you. You're the photographer. You go out. You I'm do the job. photographer. You go out. You do the job. What's the turnaround time? Typically, you go out. You take a picture. You take a situation like that three four hundred people a week to ten days about a week to ten days mm-hmm. so what happens at the, the most what happens when the client is like oh i don't, uh, I don't uh. how does that work when they if they ever do it i mean you know i could say i was satisfied with mine but what happens when a person is like uh, if you know because cameras don't lie if you just gotta have it oh you what do you mean you uh, i don't like it yeah um in the past year, I've only had one client who was totally dissatisfied. I refunded all of our money. Okay. Was it a was it a legit? I mean, I guess it's it was a hundred degree day. Um, 
She's an older lady. She was very hot. It was very hot. The pictures came out very hot. Um, she did not have the proper makeup tools to eliminate the sweat from her face. Gotcha, gotcha. So yeah. when she got her edits, she felt like she looked hot. Right. I didn't argue. You know what? How about I refund your money and you go to someone else and we'll leave it at that. Well, no argument, no no must not. The customer's always right. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I like that though. I mean just give me money back and just keep it moving and and that's that. Who who do you wish you could shoot? Who do you wish you could shoot? Who do I wish I could yeah. shoot? Let's five people. Let's talk about five people you wish you could shoot right now. Barack Obama. Who you could shoot and where would you shoot him? Barack? Yeah, where? Wherever he told me to come. <laughs> <laughs> um, his wife, Megan Thee Stallion, Taylor Swift, <laughs> Kanye West. First those, two, yeah. Those Bottom are, three. Uh, but those are some great shoes. I mean, listen, yeah. you know how many people, followers they have, how many people they come in contact with? Are you kidding me? If the photo is hot, that's that's the rap. Oh, wait, wait. Let me pull back Megan. Mary J. Blige. Yeah, Mary is hot right yeah. now. She's Mary's Mary. hot, always hot. She's the queen. She's I'm always hot, but she's Mary. super hot right now. She's power, hot. power, but IG, she's hot. How she's about how about any any celebrity throughout history, living or dead, in their prime, Ooh. whenever? Whenever. Whenever. Oh, Whoever. I ain't no number one. Oh, go ahead. Do I get five? Sure. Yeah, let's take five. Mike and Prince. That's Mar two. Marvin That's Gaye. Three. Bring it home. Jimmy Hendrix. I have a dream. Bring it home. <laughs> Only because you said something, but <laughs> probably. Okay. Are we fighting for his fifth spot? Is that what's going on right now? <laughs> Um, yeah, they're down over there competing for the fifth spot. They're jockeying they, for that. And they're giving me good people. They're giving me great people. Um, I mean, I hate to be generic about it, you know, but, yeah, definitely MLK. Um, <laughs> this is probably off the beaten path, but if if it was someone, I'd probably go with Trayvon Martin. You know what? I can appreciate that. Yeah, I can too. Definitely. I can appreciate that. Yeah, to I catch him in a that. happy that came moment. Way out of left. That, yeah, I yeah. wasn't expecting that answer, but yeah, that was dope. Nipsey Hussle, you know, yeah, somebody yeah. who impacted our culture. Yeah, unfortunately, after they left, in a way that it changed how we live, who we are. You they know, became icons. They didn't even plan for it. Exactly. You got any aspirations to shoot in sporting events? Not the Lions. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, let me not say that. I mean, I guess you could. I mean, it's 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 some really good pictures you could take in a. In I would a, not in shy a, away in from, a losing game, right? It is. Some good I would. You take. The picture would not show whether they right the whether they won or lost. Yeah, yeah. Um, an opportunity to stand on the field with the monopod and the huge um, five or six thousand dollar lens. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I but mean, is I it an aspiration? Man, if I could get on the floor and, and catch LeBron or Kay Cunningham in three years when he takes the Pistons to the championship, absolutely. Yeah. Now, has anybody ever been in awe of that? You know, you was taking the picture right then and there, like celebrity or just somebody you have. You're taking the picture, but you have to say, "Hold up, that's so and so." Let me get a breath first. All right, now I'm ready. I got a chance to do Run DMC's concert um, about, I guess it's been four or five years yeah. ago. All right. And um, the guy, the promoter, as I was going, I guess he could see I was getting excited. <laughs> he was like, okay, look, what you can't do is go in there and act like you're acting right now because right. you, you got to appear to be professional. Because I'm like, you know, uh -huh. I mean, it was, I, I got to shoot EPMD, Rakim, and Run DMC. Oh, man. And um, that was a pretty exciting day. All right. Those are some of, that's some of my best work that, I've got some pictures of Rock Hill, um, literally rapping paid in full. Man. That you can't tell from the picture, but I'll always know. You always mm -hmm. know. And it was when I tell you I got the sweet spot and it's absolutely perfect lighting, exposure, everything. I could blow it up and put it on a billboard, Man. and it would be crystal clear. All right. So, so okay. So look, social media. Everybody had their pictures up. Everybody's Facebook, Instagram, IG, TikTok, everywhere. 
So when you see pictures out as a photographer and you look at other pictures from other photographers, what's the separator for you? I mean, what do you, what do you think when you look at your image and you look at three or four other photographers' images, what do you think separates the quality of what you do? The level of creativity, number one. Um, photography, in its purest sense, is all about lighting. Mm -hmm. um, people who master light in such a way that the, us creative professionals go, wow, that's nice. Um, there are a few people that I, I see their work and I go, okay, that's amazing. Okay. And, I, and I immediately DM them whether they respond or not and say, you know what, that's off the chain. Okay. I give them, I give them hand claps and fire. And so, are you more attracted to a pure shot that's unfiltered, or does it matter when you I don't do care that? About filters, filters don't impress you, me. You cheated. Oh, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. So you want you talking I about the natural the, shot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, give it, give. I, if you could take it raw and just pop some color, and the lighting is perfect. There are no shadows. There's no nothing. The people look amazing. And even if you edited it to and uh, retouched it to a point where these people look almost unreal mm -hmm. okay right. you know i like black and white photos what do you think eric terry i like black and white uh, they capture the moment i like black you know, and white wedding pictures i think they're okay, beautiful yeah. i just think they're so classy especially with the right frame i mean it depends on the subject it's uh i've seen a, uh, a lot of really good band pictures come out better in black and a lot of band pictures come out better in black and white than yeah. in, uh, than in full color yeah um having stood around in a few the parking lots of a few abandoned warehouses myself uh yeah, it's, yeah. I like I like black and white. I think it's just so classy mm -hmm. in the right frame. I really do. Well, and there's there's just a level of contrast you can get um, between lines with black and white that it, color you can't, get you can't color. go to color. Mm -hmm. But yeah. as I, I was told, a photography class in school is not black and white; it's different shades of gray. Right. Okay. Yeah. See, yeah. I'm, I think I think grayscale. Gray scale. Gray scale. Yeah. Absolutely. See, I did my homework. Absolutely. I did it. Absolutely. <coughs> I, I did. A quick question as well, because um, see, you, you you delved into it. So who are some of your inspirations as photographers that you can probably name check that we might know by, say, the pictures they've taken? I had the opportunity this summer to go to a two-day intensive with um, Peter Hurley. Peter Hurley is the foremost headshot photographer in the world. All right. um, if you've ever looked at the pictures of, of my headshots, they were taken by Peter Hurley. Right. Um, and his... He, he has a whole style that I'm, I'm, I'm like a protege working to become an associate and eventually a mentor. But um, his, number one, it's not about the great picture. It's about the relationship and how you make that person feel in that session so that they give you the best person that they are. Mm -hmm. doesn't matter how they look like, how many bumps they have on their face, how wrinkled their skin is. If you can get to capture the pure essence of a person, mm -hmm. um, nothing beats that right. and so for that Peter sits real up high there's a local guy Sean Lee doing a lot of great things locally but he's also um, noted around the nation um, PPA voted him a humanitarian of the year he just was awarded a huge grant to support young people in the city of Detroit right. very fond of um, Sean and what he's doing and that whole cohort and team of people um, Mike South that he works with on a regular basis. Um, there's a young lady, Kesha Lambert, who she shoots weddings for famous people all over the world. Her work is absolutely incredible. Right. There's not a time that I ever look at a post that she makes and I don't go, wow, I wish I, wish I had that eye. Yeah. Oh, I wish I had that talent. I wish I had that gift. Um, most of the people who I follow that I truly admire are not people that everyone knows, mm -hmm. but us in the field knows. There's a gentleman out of Jackson, Mississippi, named Brian McKinney, mm -hmm. who, in my opinion, he's one of the coldest portrait photographers in the nation. All right. In fact, um, I'm getting very close to being able to get my own studio, and I, I DM'd him the other day and said, I want to come down there to Jackson, Mississippi, and I want to come and kind of see you and take you to lunch or do whatever right. and learn from the best because his pictures are amazing and you know what that all speaks to one thing that i know about you and i know chris know about you one one you're an educator but you're still learning and you're willing to be the mentee that's the fun part exactly 
And that's yeah, the fun yeah. part. And I'm just loving and seeing the excitement and that you, as you talk about it, you're like, oh, no, 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 you're into it. And I'm like, yeah, man, yeah. That's, well, that's the dopest part. Well, let me ask something kind of in that vein uh, to um, amateur photographers, guys, you know, people who are just getting started sure, out, right? Yeah. Um, as a, I, I play drums. I also okay. play a little guitar. And what I've learned um, is that you can spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on a guitar or a set of drums. But it's the ten dollar drum heads and the ten dollar guitar strings that make the most have the most impact on your sound and your tone. Wow. So I'm wondering, is there an equivalent for photography? Is there like what's the inexpensive accessory that if you pay extra close attention to and make sure to get exactly what you're looking for, puts you two or three steps ahead of where you like, you know, where you would be if you didn't know that. Um I'm thinking, like, is there a, a lens, is there is like a middle tier brand, a particular okay. middle tier brand of lens that gives you maximum bang for your buck, or something to that effect? Your major um, photography companies: Sony, Nikon, and Canon. What do you they shoot are, with? I shoot with Nikon. Okay. Um, I am in the process of changing over to Sony, um, but I have a whole army of Nikon lenses. Or lenses that are compatible to Nikon equipment and in order to change over fully to Sony I gotta get an army of Sony lenses and just like So none of it's interchangeable from any of those manufacturers? No. None of it? No. Okay. It's, it's what works with Sony works with Sony and what works with Nikon works with Nikon That's good to Sony know. and so forth. Um, but there is um, there's a company called Godox that sells more affordable lighting equipment that you could take just as great a pictures as, as from the other companies that sell lighting equipment that costs um, three times as much. And um, it gets you the same effect, same quality. They've sort of um, Amazon the photography market and the, the lighting market in the last few years. In fact, the major player in the photography game here, retail, ProCam, didn't have a lot of Godox equipment um, as recent as two or three years ago. Now half the store is Godox equipment. Got you. Uh, so what? So somebody's an amateur, like Eric said, and they wanted to get a camera right now and just kind of get into it. Start small. What? Well, well, Don't yeah. spend a lot of money. How much? What are we talking? Hundred? Two hundred? Just to. A basic level, entry level DSLR, you could probably get for between three and five hundred dollars. What brand? What brand would you recommend? A good brand for a small startup. Um, you know what? Nikon or Canon? They they. I actually say you know I use Nikon. Canon's a little easier. Canon's a little, a little easier. Easier to learn. Um, what's called the triangle, which is ISO, aperture, and um, shutter speed. Okay. Okay. Kind of a little easier to manipulate, in, in my opinion. I had a Canon first. Um, my house was burglarized. This was before the whole Triumph story. And when I went to the store to buy another um, used DSLR, they had a Nikon, and I bought a Nikon. I never looked back. You know, I used to take pictures. I, my first experience taking pictures, I was in a dark room. So I had to actually develop the film, which was a very uh, Man, a long that's time a, ago. That's a good skill. To <laughs> it's, it's a good skill. It's a good skill, but it's a it's a difficult process because you can screw that up real quick. As soon mm. as somebody opens the door, it's over. I don't care how many shots you took; they're done. They're dead. It's over. Um, but people who have been taking pictures since there was darkroom and, and the digital era had not come to light, yeah are much better photographers. Yeah, yeah. It was a class. It was actually a class. You had to get your own camera, and you had to go out and take pictures and develop them, and you had to turn the pictures in for a grade. Like, every week, you had to take pictures. and You had to go develop your own pictures. Wow. It was, yeah. And he was there to make sure you developed your own pictures. It wasn't like you were going to come in a dark room, but somebody was going to do it for you. Right. No, he wanted to make sure you understood how to use the chemicals. You knew the wait time. You knew the exposure time. You knew all of that. Mm -hmm. So it was interesting. Um, now, I, I, you know, it's almost it's almost unimaginable because <laughs> I sit and I go delete, 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 delete. Sometimes when I take the picture, I already know it's getting deleted. You know, you satisfy the client, but I know I'm not keeping that picture. 
because it or, doesn't represent or it comes the, out the blurry or yeah, gotcha. yeah, it's, yeah. it's slightly out of focus i mean yeah. things happen right. and all of those things happened with traditional photography before the age of dslrs and digital photography but he was kind of stuck with that blurry picture Right. So you shoot as many pictures as possible during the session so you can have that room, right? Um, I've learned to minimize the shot where I only need to get it maybe three or four times. With larger groups of people, I may take five shots of one shot because somebody blinked, somebody looked away. If somebody's standing over here, excuse me, with a cell phone, and so three of the people are looking over here and not in the camera in the picture. And so if you have an organization where you took a picture of 15 people and they're all prominent people in that organization. You want them all looking in your eye and in the picture and not away at somebody else. Because if they're all, all of their faces are crystal clear and all of their attention um, is, is at the camera, but their eyes are going in a different way, you're gonna see that. You're, you're not gonna, your eyes are gonna be drawn to that person who wasn't paying attention. Right, yeah. So you take five shots. Now this is a Photoshop skill. I might have to take the eyes from that person when they were looking at me and take it and put it on the picture that's perfect with everybody else. Because you, people blink. It happens. Yeah, it happens. it happens. You can't tell people, okay, for the next eight seconds, nobody blink. Because then you get deer in the head like people go, and that, that's not what you want. You know, I'm going to ask this question. So I was, I was working in the school this year, and the photographer came out for senior pictures, right? And it seemed like halfway through the session, I came back into. I left the gym at the beginning, and when I came back in, he just seemed so frustrated. He was sweating. He had his tie off at that point. Like, is taking senior pictures really that that is it is it that difficult? Like, to get it right, or who knows what the circumstances was? Um, well, I mean, for you, like taking senior pictures, is it, does it become difficult? Or I don't have any school accounts. Um, I work with a young lady who does several schools. Um, but if they call you and they want you to take their pictures, you can just... I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> um, I mean, it's easy money. I, I, I don't see where it would be difficult. Um, I have done some school jobs before. I have worked with the young lady that I'm referring to. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not difficult because everybody is just same backdrop, same light, smile. Right, boom. Two mm -hmm. or three shots, you're in, you're out, you're gone. Senior pictures are good pictures to take, though, right? That's how you do. Patience is a definite asset for a photographer, um, no matter what the situation. Yeah. You have to be patient. If you're not patient, you're not going to enjoy it, and you will be sweaty and, and because it, it requires patience. People so if somebody wants to set up a session with you today, how can they get in touch with you? Well, how, can they, how can they reach out to you? Um, Facebook, Instagram. Um, you can call me direct, 567-343-1980. You can email me, jared.davis7106 at gmail.com. That's Jared spelled like Jared the jeweler, and that's Davis spelled like Davis cut rate drugs. I'm aging myself, but it's <laughs> D-A-V-I-S. <laughs> Now, I saw you had a, a, a ad on Facebook for a Christmas thing pop up. What, what's going on with that? We're doing, um, my home studio is limited in size and capacity. Um, not much larger than this room. Um, one of the great things, the great problems that I have is that I've established relationships with a lot of families where I started shooting a couple when they were boyfriend and girlfriend, and now they're married with two or three kids. So I needed a larger space. So we partner with the Connect Event Space on um, Out of Drive in 96, Miss LaWanda Galloway. And every Sunday from 12 to 6, we're doing what's called holiday pop-ups, where we go and we set up. Um, a lot of our competitors have very elaborate, elaborate Christmas backdrops. Mm -hmm. um, and so to sort of compete against that, we have somewhat elaborate backdrops, but they're different every week. Okay, so you change the backdrop every week. I change the backdrop and the props and the couch and, and, and all the arrangements every week so that your picture doesn't look like everyone else's pictures because um, what I found is some of my clients who kind of veered off and went to those elaborate studios, um, they got upset when they got their pictures back because it looks just like Terry's family or Chris's family because they're all in front of the exact same elaborate backdrop. Okay. So, Okay, if you come next week, your pictures won't look like Chris's because Chris had a backdrop that's not like yours. 
So we just try and be creative. As How's much it going as we so can. far? How's it going good? Um, the first week was slow. Mm-hmm. Last week was busy. Um, tomorrow and next week, we only have about three spots left. Wow. They're completely full. How long does the session take? 45 minutes? 30, an hour? 45 minutes. Wow. Mm-hmm. Let me That's- ask you this, too, real quick, so I know we got to wrap up. Now, everybody's doing the jack of all trades type thing as far as cameras. If I got a camera, um, I can do anything. Now, anybody ask you to do video? <clears throat> And would you do video? I partner with someone that does video. I don't do video. No, okay. So you're, stri- you're strictly photographer. I haven't fallen in love. I haven't even started to like video. All right. The work that goes into editing photography, I only can say I admire that person who does that with video. All right. Because that's a lot more work. Mm-hmm. I yeah. bet, yeah. Yeah, even a little stuff I try to do sometimes, it's a headache. I mean, I the really equipment mad. and the, the moving and the cameras yeah. and the sound um, and everything. Today, when I was outside shooting a young lady, there was a wedding, and there were three photographers, and the wind is blowing, and the camera was blowing in the wind, and I'm like, what is this? And they, we weren't necessarily irritated, but we were waiting on them to move so I could take pictures in that area where they were. Right. And But I understood that it was taking a little bit longer because it was harder to get the shot because it was like a hurricane outside. (laughs) And so you don't want to give somebody a wedding video and it looks like it was a hurricane. You still have to look like it was a bright, sunny day. Yeah, man. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, man. That's That's what they're going to expect when they get the picture back. uh, That just sounds too much much to even deal with. I'm, I'm more inclined to build a relationship and partner with someone who loves video like I love photography Mm -hmm. and we work and we team together. I All refer right. you, you for, refer me. It's about relationships. I don't, um, you know, it's it's more people on earth than it'll ever be photographers to take pictures. Mm-hmm. So I don't have a problem with supporting the next person and, right. and helping them be successful in hopes that they'll do the same for me. And if they don't, then I'll get it through the universe. There it, there it is, and that's the word, we, <laughs> and that and that's the kind of way we like to close up. Yeah. And that's that's the kind of words we like to hear, right? Yeah. So, so hey, it's been a pleasure meeting with Jared Davis of Jared Davis Photography again. Jared, give him that number again to reach out to you again five six seven three four three nineteen eighty. And you can find Jared Photography, Jared, Jared Davis, Davis Photography, photography at Instagram, Instagram at Jared Facebook. Davis Photography, and on Facebook, right? Hold on, and you can Google us. <laughs> uh, and there Google too Or you can go to Jared Davis Photography The website There um, it is um, Thanks to Scholarly Edits Dr. Christopher Rogers Who is the curator of our website We have that also But um, most people today Vet you as a creative On social media yeah. So you will find a wealth of work For everything except for In large amounts Weddings because weddings are sacred People don't hire me for their most special day for me to market it and make money. So usually wedding consultations is something that I do face-to-face. Got it. That's totally admirable. I like that. Definitely. So so listen, it's been a pleasure. This is The Real Podcast with Chris and Mel on Cave Radio. And we're out. We make it make sense. Peace. Say amen.